Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another Artifact Remix Draft. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one, pick one. Blade of Shared Souls is our rare, and it's a very fun card that we had some really, uh, really great games with in the past. So it's basically a 3-mana 2-2 most of the time, but then when you get to move this equipment around later in the game, you can make your smallest creature a copy of your biggest creature, so, it is super sweet later in the game, not the greatest on its Enter the Battlefield effect, uh, but it's particularly good in blue in this format, because one of the commons, Gear Seeker Serpent, can be played as like a 2, 3, or 4 mana 5, 6, so you can get to late game turns where you cast a Gear Seeker Serpent and have the 2 mana left over to immediately make one of your 1-1s one also a 5, 6. That's where this card really pops off, so I think it just synergizes really well with what blue is doing in this format with some of its best commons. So we'll take the Blade of Shared Souls to start things off. And for pick number two, plenty incredible options again. Probably just go with the rare again. Let's do some green-blue nonsense with Ovia Pashiri. Great way to just clutter the board up with a bunch of servos or some gigantic constructs when you don't have other stuff to do with your mana. Alternatively, there's some cards that are a little more flexible. The colorless cards like Misha's Research Desk and Scrapbook Cohort. These are both okay on the front half, but they become great when you can unearth them. So really good white card, really good red card. Decent colorless cards. Um, outside of that, really good removal with Balding Sparks. The modular creatures all play quite well, like the Arcbound prototype. And Tempting Apple's a good finisher for anything, but let's get spicy here. Let's take a bunch of rares and stuff. Do some fancy things with this draft. For pick number three... I do like Tamiyo's Immobilizer. It is better when you can proliferate, so green-blue would be the deck that has some proliferation, uh, but even just stunning something for four turns is pretty good when it's a flexible card like this. So I'll take Immobilizer here, stick into our blue. Alternatively, if we don't want to get married to the, the green yet, we could go Arcbound Tracker. Just blue-red all artifact creatures would be a solid deck. But let's grab the Immobilizer. Pick number four, we've got Thraben Inspector, probably the best common in this pack, but there's Arcbound Tracker still, and Metallic Rebuke. Metallic Rebuke playing really well with clue tokens and treasure tokens and equipment that are sitting around, so big fan of the Rebuke. I'll probably take that to stick to blue. Stick to our blade. Pick number five, Tireless Provisioner is a great card at grinding out a long game. Every time you're playing a land, you're getting a food or a treasure getting a bunch of life or getting a bunch of mana. That's like three Arcbound trackers in a row, so this would have been a solid draft pod for a red deck, but I have drafted a lot of red lately. Been a little while since I did some green stuff, so we'll stick to the slower, grindier, blue-green pile we're working on. I think Provisioner looks great there. Pick six. All right, Hollow Scavenger's great for a food deck alongside the Provisioner. And I really don't like Knight of the Sweets Revenge, because like even when you were a super dedicated food deck in Wilds of Eldraine, it wasn't that great. And there's a decent amount of food in this format, but honestly, I think it's just a tiny bit less than there was in Wilds. Um, and again, even there, it just wasn't very good. Ooh, pick seven Fleeting Memories. This card's kind of all or nothing. You need to have a lot of investigating in your deck to get this card to actually kill somebody. And if you mill somebody like 20 cards but uh, their library still has a few in it, then you've done essentially nothing. Like, mill is very all or nothing. The difference between milling your opponent's whole library and milling all but one card is massive, because then you've just dumped a bunch of mana into doing absolutely nothing if they haven't actually died from the mill. But, can get a lot of clue tokens. You can try to win with this card, and that is something you can do in specifically blue-green. So... We will do that here. Our Gothian Opportunist gives us the Power Stone for our artifacts, as well as our clue tokens, our food tokens, all that kind of stuff. That feels great for this archetype. But Scrapwork Mutt's good for anything, and Bone Sputter's good for a lot of stuff. But I think Opportunist makes the most sense here. Now we get a Surgical Skull Bomb, or we could speculate towards some white fixing, but I'll take the Skull Bomb to slow things down. Pick 10, probably not a Tempting Apple deck, but really don't think we're a Moon Snare prototype deck, so I'll still take the Apple. Gothian Sprite, we'll fill our two drop. If we be if we become a, a really aggressive like green deck, then the fact that this can't be blocked by artifacts can matter sometimes. 
Actually, Candy Trail's a clue, so I'll take that. It's a clue and a food, so it hits all of our synergies. All right, well, Retrofitter Foundry is disgusting in a very grindy deck. Just takes over the long game. It is just a ridiculous mana sink. When both players run out of stuff to do, like if you're ever in a top deck war, you just throw all your mana at this and just keep fueling yourself with really big creatures. All right. Um, Gaia's Gift's really good at protecting important cards. Ravenous Squirrel? Even if you're not playing black, this sits there and gets bigger every time you sacrifice clues and foods and stuff. And if we do splash in some black, it's a really good value engine. I feel like Squirrel could be really nice here. Probably take some blue-black and green-black dual lands to help uh, every once in a while get that mana. Alright, pick three. Hard evidence for another clue to go with the Squirrel and the Fleeting Memories. Just be a 0-3 blocker in the early game to slow things down. I like that idea. Pick four. So, Weirding Wood could fix us for the Black Source, and it gives us the clue towards the uh, Fleeting Memories, but I think Cleanup Crew is just an incredible way to stabilize in this format. 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, blow up your opponent's best permanent, killing their gigan gigantic artifact, or killing one of their enchantment-based removal spells. Has some really relevant abilities quite frequently, so I like this a lot. I think this thing's busted. Okay, pick five. Now the Byway Courier for clue synergies. Spider food would be fine too. Um, give us more interaction. I'm gonna take the courier though, I think. This is these are not three mana creatures. I guess I've got a good amount of three mana creatures without the courier. You know what? Sure, we'll take more interactions. Throw spider food in here. Seems fine. Cogwork Wrestler's fine. Doesn't hit a ton of synergies for us. I think I'd rather take Weirding Wood. Or the green-blue duel, that'd be okay. But I'll take the Weirding Wood. Get some random black sources in. Pick seven, Secrets of the Key for sure. Uh, pick eight, Oaken Siren for sure. Nothing here. Nothing here. Let's get another two drop. I don't have a lot of those. It's a late three, but inspector, but I'm not splashing that in. All right, we have full on weirding wood deck. This is 23 playables. We've got a deck here. Big, grindy, slow deck with some late game win cons like Retrofitter Foundry and uh, Fleeting Memories. This will be very different from some of the more aggressive decks we've been playing recently. Last pick, Bone Splitter? I would have I would have committed murder for this card in a couple of these recent drafts. And now we get a last pick. That's crazy. The one draft that I just don't care about being aggressive. All right, pack three, pick one. Another provisioner is probably where it's at. Right. Ornithopter of Paradise actually kind of awesome here too because we're pretty slow, so the mana ramp's very helpful. The fixing is relevant for Ravenous Squirrel. I think Ornithopter of Paradise looks great. I'll take my first copy of that over my second provisioner. Aha. Well, there's something to ramp into to try to kill our opponent. We're a big, slow, grindy deck, and this will uh, just counter everything our opponent tries to do, basically. Sure. It doesn't actually copy a lot of our spells, so it's weaker in this deck than it could be, but I think it's still a good just 7-mana win condition to ramp into. And speaking of big win conditions to ramp into, Cleanup Crew works perfectly fine. Take another copy of that. Uh, we could take another spider food or another secrets of the key, but at this point we're at 26 non-land cards. I think I'm doing fine to just take some fixing here. We've got room to cut just a few mediocre cards like prototype and stuff and call it a deck. 
Another Ornithopter of Paradise I think is a little better than Oak and Siren for this deck, because we don't have that many artifact creatures higher up on the curve, but we do have big non-artifact creatures to ramp towards. So, pretty happy with Ornithopter. Candy Grab will be a fine splash to, to up the interaction here. Mm, splash in a Tezzeret's touch, or just main color play Hamlet Glutton? It's probably the Hamlet Glutton. We have a lot of clues and food and stuff. Five mana, six, six game three is a huge way to stabilize, and especially when you play Weirding Wood on three, you can just play this on turn four. Yeah, it's Glutton. We're just full on blue green ramp this time around. We're just slamming down big things. We're probably cutting fleeting memories at this point, just slamming with beef instead to end the game. I feel like that's probably how this deck's going to play out. So that we're not actually uh, trying to grind out a super long game with Fleeting Memories. We're just trying to ramp into insane, super large threats. Is there anything there's even a slight chance we play out of this pack? No. It's rare draft. A slight chance of Mere Sire clutters up the board. Oh yeah, we've got tons of win conditions without trying to mill out with Fleeting Memories, and we only have the one copy and not as many clues as I wanted to get. So we have Hamlet Glutton, Double Cleanup Crew, Jingataxius, Retrofitter Foundry, and Ovia Pashiri. It's tons. Wave Sifter's a great value play at 5 mana. We'll drop the Moon Snare. Probably drop the Sprites. Those are more aggressive two drops. We want more defensive stuff. Not going to play an Alloy Mirror. I have double Ornithopter, double Weirding Wood. We're not playing more ramp at this point. Okay. Five more cards to cut. What do we got for uh, for clues? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's drop fleeting memories for sure. I think this is enough clues. Even if we cut secrets of the key, um, to just have enough card draw in this deck. Yeah, I think we can cut the dedicated card draw. Put that blade up with our creatures. I think blade is okay in this deck. It's not as good as it was in our last deck where we could play really cheap creatures that were large and then immediately move it around. But still, once we resolve a cleanup crew, the turn after that, you know, turning a 1 1 mirror into a 6 6 is still a big deal. So I think blade's fine. Uh, again, I think we're doing great on. Uh, card draw. We don't need dedicated card draw like Candy Trail. Shots Harvester is mostly an aggressive card, so we can cut that. And one final cut. So I guess Tempting Apple is also just an aggro finisher mostly, so drop that and call it a deck here. We'll still have one, two, three, four black sources for the sacrifice ability on Squirrel, which is the only thing we need black for. So we're, yeah, don't run a swamp or anything. We'll call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today. We're on a green blue ramp deck. We have two Ornithopters of Paradise, a Tireless Provisioner giving us a treasure every time we play a land, and a Weirding Wood, actually two Weirding Woods, for ramp spells to cast some early Hamlet Gluttons, cleanup crews, and maybe even a Gin Gataxius as massive late game win conditions. Not only that, but we have huge mana sinks if the game grinds out, as well as just if we have a ton of mana, like Retrofitter Foundry spewing out tons of tokens, making them absolutely massive, and Ovia Pashiri spitting out tons of tokens or tons of massive tokens. 
Uh, we've got some great card draw running around with all the investigating that we're getting on Weirding Woods and Hard Evidence, as well as potentially sacrificing some leftover food tokens and stuff to a Ravenous Squirrel off of some of our mana fixings. So lots of stuff going on for this deck. It looks like a really solid, really late game oriented build this time around instead of something more aggressive. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to slow things down just enough to resolve some huge late game spells. But we will see how it plays out as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for a great opening hand against Lord Tupperware, one of the Lords Limited. Definitely recommend the podcast if you haven't listened before. Got a really excellent opener here because it's got a bunch of early game plays and that's what you need to start things off. Our deck has tons of good late game, although Reckoner Bankbuster is some really good late game as well. There's going to be three pieces of card draw as well as a 4-4 vehicle. And a 1-1 pilot to crew it automatically. Yeah, Bank Buster's great. We could find like a spider food or something, that'd be awesome. Probably just make a bunch of treasure tokens in this matchup against blue-black. I doubt Lord Tupperware is going to be doing anything particularly aggressive. I guess he could be on the uh, Tezzeret's Touch deck, turning things into 5-5s five and beating down quick. In which case, we probably wouldn't have time to dump a bunch of mana into food tokens anyway. Yeah, we're probably just going to play Provisioner off of Ornithopter so we can play land, get a treasure immediately. Do I want a Mere Sire right now or save the treasure? Probably save the treasure. Could also Ravenous Squirrel immediately there, but since I didn't have another green source to play that turn. Awkward. Alright. Take one. The Renegade map, sure. Ooh, so Lord Tupperware is stuck on mana right now. Tangle Pool Bridge is the draw. Okay, so Ravenous Squirrel is going to be just the nuts. Pun was not intended, but I appreciate the pun. So, just start cracking stuff, right? So this thing is massive. I'm go tap land here, make another treasure. Mirror sire. Probably just go full hollow scavenger, right? Let's go full hollow scavenger. All right. Lord Tupperware is going to have to do some big stuff real quick. Stabilize against the squirrel. And there you go. Yeah, Henny's pretty big stuff can get indestructible by sacking that crab. And every time we lose a creature, Yeheni gets bigger. It's a wave sifter. It's a pretty good value play. Another treasure. Definitely cast this thing. So let's see, Lord Tupperware can crew a 4-4 here on blocks. Can send in a 5-4 scavenger. Send in like a 6-6 six, six squirrel. Don't think... Whoa, no. That's not what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to attack. I don't think we sent in the squirrel yet. Right, because it's a 6-6, it's a six, six, right? One, two, three, four, five. No, the squirrel's a five, five. They block with a four, four. It's crew three. They'd have to crew with both these. Okay, no, I can send in the squirrel. I think. 
And I can make it a 6-6, six, because six, I sack a food to scavenger off of Ornithopter. I sack a clue to double treasure. Yeah, we can do this. <laughs> the math off of all these tokens is pretty egregious with the squirrel. Okay, let's uh, hollow scavenger eat food. So they sack the crab here. And let's also draw the card and get a bunch of squirrel damage in. Oh, Blade of Shared Souls on the Squirrel? Or on the Provisioner. Either of those would be pretty nuts. I guess the Squirrel would be more nuts. Alright, Lord Tupperware's over it. This is just insane combo nonsense, and he's not got any interaction that's gonna ruin this at all. Plus, I'm taking a long time trying to do the math on this. <laughs> There's just so many tokens sitting around. So, fair enough. We're gonna start things off 1-0, heading into Game 2. Here we are on the play for game two. If they blow up my Ornithopter Paradise and I don't draw an island, we're going to have big issues. But there's the island. Um, actually play Oak and Siren first because that damages them and ramps into a mobilizer. Ornithopter does not damage them. But it ramps into Cleanup Crew, but I won't be able to play Cleanup Crew till turn five either way I do this. So we might as well play the Ornithopter on turn four. Because the Oak and Siren doesn't ramp into cleanup crew, so. Playing against Green Red, which can be some pretty good anti artifact tech. Which is not good for my mobilizer. Might not be long for this world. But speaking of anti artifact tech, our cleanup crew can blow up their cache. If nothing else, that is something. Especially if they choose to proliferate here, I'd be perfectly happy to do that. Okay, now they're gonna grab a land, fair. Play an Arcbound Mouser. And they make it a 2-2 if they put the cash counter on it. Choose not to put the cash counter on it. Would I rather kill the Mouser or the cash? Because we're killing one of those. Let's kill the cash. If I kill the Mouser, cash has three plus one plus one counters to just move throughout the rest of the game. Well, our deck is super good at dumping its hand. We didn't hit all of our token nonsense this game, so we don't have, like, boatloads of card draw at this point, so now we're kind of just chilling, which could be an issue when our opponent has a full grip. Six cards in hand still. Like, they could play, like, one removal spell, and then we're not really doing anything. They just blow up cleanup crew, and we're poking for one damage a turn. Yeah, we could absolutely stall out here at this rate. And they could already just block cleanup crew with the whole board, but they'd have to block with the whole board. They've got Gaia's Gift for two mana, that's horrendous for me. Let's immobilize the Vorak so that we know we can just get in. I guess Gaia's Gift could still kill Oak and Siren there. Recommission the Explorer's Cache, fair enough. Juice up the Mouser. Oh yeah, that's insane with Conclave Mentor. Yeah, Explorer's Cache Conclave Mentor is wild. We don't have any kills here, so might as well take the damage. I guess I could chomp and just get a replacement 1-1, one, one, but it's still at 20, so... Oh, hello. That's probably decent. Right? I guess it depends what they're going to try to cast next turn. Because we don't have anything to duplicate. We don't have any spells, period. Hmm. 
But if they try to cast an artifact instant or sorcery, we get to counter it. That's a creature. And that creature goes insane with Explorer's Cache. They get two counters onto something and two counters onto Brawler. Yep. Move to combat. Mobilize the lifelink. I've got a 5 5 up. I don't need to immobilize anything here. If they play a combat trick, it's countered. Okay, I do think in the end step I immobilize the 5 5. Probably. Wave Sifter is the draw. That doesn't get duplicated by Jenga Taxius, but it's still a good card. Tap Conclave Mentor. They can double block Jin with 3322. They can't block Cleanup Crew well. Currently, can they block clean Cleanup Crew well? Yeah, they go 4433. And this is concerning. The crackbacks. And the attacks aren't good when the 4-4 is up. They're not even that good when it's tapped, but good enough. We do this, then we crack two clues, right? Alright, at least we kill the mouser when there's no artifact creatures on board, so they just get one explorer's cash counter. So two counters on Mentor and Brawler again. We can chump block the Mentor at least. But we take a big hit from Brawler, but they're out of life gain and they're at nine. And they can't cast an artifact instant or sorcery. Uh-oh. They can if they cast two in one turn, so this means they have a good enough instant or sorcery to uh, throw that under the bus for it. Yeah. Yikes. Um. Draw. A metallic rebuke. Oh my god. Blue. Blue. Cast it like this. Oh my god. Clutchest clue token in the world. They're also hitting for, for a lot of damage, but... If they attack with Brawler, I can tap one of their creatures to immobilize her and they're really close to dead on board. This is going to be a really close game. I don't think I can kill them on the crackback, even if they attack with Botanical Brawler right now. Which means they can send in 9 trample damage and we've got a problem. Yeah. I don't know if they can... They can't send in Conclave Mentor and survive, right? Yeah, no, it's only Brawler. Yeah. So... We immobilize the Mentor. They have a single 2-2 blocker. They chump Jenga Taxius and take 5 damage, which is very much not dead. So we gotta find something to deal with Brawler here. We don't really have in this deck. So we need to find, like, life gain. I guess Surgical Skull Bomb, we do have that. And it would be 2 copies if we hit it. Hard evidence would be good enough. Get two zero three crabs for just a bunch of blocks. Jump one damage here. Two retrofitter foundries. It's basically the same thing as one retrofitter foundry. I don't think that's good enough. This is a thopter though. Oh, that's two four fours immediately. Okay, that's good enough then, right? Not good enough to kill them, but to have enough blockers. We can have two 4-4s four on blocks. Mm. Yeah. Add 
I guess it depends on if they have something in their hand to throw a bunch of counters on the board again. If not, we have a lot of blocks here, right? I don't have another Thopter or a Servo, so we get a 1-1 one, one and crack a clue. That's six life here. I think I just block with everything, right? Play it really safe. All right. Oh, really close game. Turns out, Jingataxis plus Retrofitter Foundry did matter. How, how often has that ever happened? You had two Retrofitter Foundries on board with two non-token Thopters to turn into 4-4s? Four the Wombo combo I didn't even realize was in the deck. Honestly, how could we have realized we had the triple Wombo combo? So I didn't know that we could Ornithopter, sack an Ornithopter to make a 4-4 four four off Retrofitter Foundry. That could have been realized, but putting three and three together of, huh, imagine what happens if we have Jingatactus on board and both of our Ornithopters of Paradise, and then we top deck Retrofitter Foundry to cast two Retrofitter Foundries and turn both into 4-4s four as blockers immediately. Well... This format continues to be sweet. Just wild, weird interactions and things keep happening that are just off the charts, really. That's two games in a row. We just did crazy, weird combo -y shenanigans, and we are now 2-0. Here we are on the play for game number three. Excellent ramp here and excellent stuff to ramp into. Ornithopter into Weirding Wood into Glutton and Cleanup Crew. So we are just going blisteringly fast for a ramp deck this game for a draft ramp deck i'm sure constructed ramp decks can go even crazier even if they kill our ornithopter paradise we're fine that's really annoying though i hate that that can hit mana abilities they just shut off ornithopter paradise it's so rude well I know we're bargaining to the Hamlet glutton then. I would have been so fine with them just casting a removal spell on Ornithopter of Paradise, but the fact that it's a creature, they just get to curve out with it. This was basically a two mana flame tongue Gavu. Two mana, two one, destroy your creature. Ridiculously good deal. A patchwork automaton. Now I kind of want to have eight mana available when I play cleanup crew, but that is not likely to happen. Especially with how fast our opponent's curving out. I don't think we have time to set that up. Alright, uh, let's hope they don't have the white removal for Glutton, because the red removal should not be able to do enough damage. Almost think I'm enough under enough life total pressure here to keep Ornithopter around just for a chump block at some point, so I'll do that. Or, like, if they don't cast an artifact this turn, it stops the automaton damage. God dang. All right, dream curve. It is. I can clean up crew the static net back if I draw land. Please draw land. I am begging to draw as well as my opponent has. Thank you, Arena. We have drawn as well as our opponent has. All right, get through two six sixes then. If that's how it's going to be.
Oh boy, that's kind of annoying. Actually really annoying against our uh, adventures. Our hollow scavenger specifically. Alright, we definitely hold up on blocks for the rest of the game and try to grind out clue token value and ravenous squirrel value. To remain stable. As best as we can. Oh my god, stop! Stop. Well, we found our chump. I don't think I can afford to lose a 6 6 because they're so good at holding the rest off. Uh... Casting the food in the scavenger costs 6 mana because of this stupid golem. But that's my best blocker. It's an immediate 5 4, but the ravenous squirrel becomes really big over time. I can gain life draw a card off the clues instead of just draw a card. I can gain a life draw a card off one of them. Sure, yeah, we're gonna crack some clues here so that the squirrel's a 3 3 immediately. Maybe it gets big enough over time because we're making a food next turn. Well, I don't think they drew a land. I mean, maybe they did. They have a lot of combat math to do here. To consider attacks, even if it is just a land off the top. I think if it's just a land, you just don't attack, though. No, man, stop! Well, that was the perfect draw. I mean, they definitely have good attacks now. If I only have one 6-6. Six, six. God dang it. Uh... I live in fear. I'm so dead. I really hope they attack the Chief of the Foundry. We can actually find really solid blocks if they send the whole team in. I go really, really low. But I kill a lot of stuff without losing... Well, I lose one of my creatures. So yeah, I go like this. And I take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You got me. Go for it. I get to leave two blockers up. And I've got a rebuke up. And now I can afford the scavenger stuff. Okay, we're definitely playing to the board. So we play Pashiri and we play the scavenger. I've got the mana to eat the food or cast a rebuke. Concession from our opponent. I realize that we can flip the board and stabilize off of that attack there, and they are over it. That was very stressful. Oh, I wanted to view Battlefield. That was very stressful, so I don't know if I answered the survey correctly there. I don't know if that was exactly fun. <laughs> But yeah, if they miss like on a single draw step from there, now that we got that wide of a board state, they are going to be out of that game because we get just to start uh, gaining life and drawing cards off of the squirrel while still expanding the board state off of all the creatures that we're drawing to make sure we're really safe. So terrifying game there, but by the skin of our teeth, we barely stabilize and we are now 3-0 and heading into game four. All right, well, we've got a plan. Jingataxius and a dream. No. Okay, one of the most aggressive turn one plays in the format. This basically gets a plus one, plus one counter every turn. Then it's going to attack for two, then it's going to attack for three, then it's going to attack for... Oh, no. Going to get two plus one, plus one counters every turn? 
We just went from dead to mega dead. Uh, if I play Ornithopter, I've got four mana up next turn, which is not enough for this anyway, so... Play the Oaken Siren first. So I can get some poking. Well, I don't like our odds here. Conclave Mentor Teething Wormlet combo is insane and needs to be disrupted basically immediately. Yep, because there's the artifact. That's a 3 3 Wormlet. <laughs> Yikes. Go to 17. There's a Hamlet button. Well. Play that next turn, but I don't have anything good to bargain away. But then I'll have a 6-6 six, six blocker, which is a big deal. Oh no. Oh no, the glorifier of suffering with the Conclave Mentor? Four plus one plus one counters? Yeah. Yeah. Removal's pretty good in this format, and blue and green don't really have good removal in this format, so this kind of just synergy-driven aggro stuff. You kind of just crumple too. There's not much you can do. Yeah. Well, unless we were like splashing more black for more cheap removal. This kind of matchup seems unwinnable. I actually need the chump blockers up. I got a sack and ornithopter here, I think. Could have conceded there. I think that's a perfectly fair point to concede. But technically, we're not dead on board yet, so whatever. That's the two mana for Gaia's gift. And then I can snap concede. Goodbye. Here we are for game number five, unfortunately on the draw against a red deck, so we might just die before we do anything. Such is the way of life. Let's start off with Ravenous Squirrel, I think. I'm not just going to make a servo turn to off Foundry. We'll just play Tapland Foundry next turn. Yep. Well, these draws are awkward. It's eight mana drawn so far. Maybe seven. Oh no, Nettle Cyst is one of the scariest aggro cards in the format. Power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts and enchantments you control, and even if I kill that germ, they still have the equipment to just keep putting on the rest of their threats. You go absolutely wild with that stuff. Uh, we need to set up the Hamlet Glutton play. So let's lock that in. So we've got the big blocker. But they're on black-red here, so they just play like a bake into a pie and we die. Um, I would really hate to trade a squirrel into Minstrosity, but the amount of damage we're taking, I don't think it would be unreasonable. Spider food? Okay. That kills the Nettle Cyst. Okay, that's actually a very good draw. I can kind of afford to do that and make a servo this turn. Sure, they can make a double striking minstrosity, but I can just make a servo and chump with that servo, so. Be fine. Spider food was just the perfect draw here. Really appreciate that off the top. Yeah, sure. Servo chump time. Cool. Alright. Oh, Goblin Engineer. They just get the Nettle Cyst back now. <laughs> yep. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't uh, glutton and blade here. So we have to glutton. So we're just going to glutton and sack the food. So we can still have the clue. I'm a mana off from having the jump block for Minstrosity again, which is rough. They just held Retrofitter mana there. Retrofitter mana would just be 1-1-1 one, one, one again. They can do this at instant speed. But this doesn't auto-equip or anything. I'll just take it for a turn and then we will get another glutton and we can start making servos and turning every servo into a glutton every turn Oof, they've got the emergency weld too so they can emergency weld and then they can goblin engineer sacking a servo to get nettle cyst we're getting bombed the heck out nettle cyst lizard blades engineer trying to reverse bomb with our retrofitter foundry and now we've got all of our rares, not all of them. We've got Retrofitter, Ovia, and Blade, so we're going to play just as many rares, and we'll see if that means we've got a shot. Rares v. Rares, let's go. Okay, Ovia plus Retrofitter Foundry is pretty nuts. If we have the time. But we're at 8 life against Black Red, so. Who knows? Probably not. No! Flying equipment. Flying double strike. Power toughness equal to the number of creatures or number of artifacts and enchantments. Yeah, that just kills us in one shot. I guess I can get a flyer off of Retrofitter Foundry, but it takes time to do that. Well. I have to make a servo this turn so that next turn I can turn it into a Thopter. Which means I can't jump with a servo right now. Yeah, I have to make a servo. I guess I could. It's one, two, three, four, five, six mana to make a one-one flyer. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could jump with the servo here and spend all my mana doing that next turn. I'm not using Ovia or anything. Instant speed. Yeah, it is instant speed. I guess it's four mana if I do it off of Ovia. Three and then one there. Sure, I guess since it's just. Four mana. Since it's just four mana, we probably do jump with the servo. Good lord. One, two, three, four, and then I have four mana left to do something else. Should be two to draw a card. Or it could be just to untap it again and make a four four. Oh, whatever. I'm in the game so over at this point. Just whatever. Let's just see what happens. I'm pretty sure we're just going to die no matter what. The Goblin Engine Nettle Cyst Lizard Blades. But if they play really loose and they just, like, completely suit up a flyer. That is where we can really start crawling back. Like, maybe they don't see the Retrofitter Foundry can get the Flying Chumper here. And not only can we chump, but we can chump and get a 4-4 in the same turn.
they can get trampled, we're just dead, period. All right, that is exactly what gives me a tiny chance. Okay. Uh, I could hit a Metallic Rebuke, though. Nope. Well, that was unwinnable. We are 3-2, and two, heading into game 6. Awkward hand, but I think we keep here. 3 mana at least, it can still cast like half the hand. No, turn 2 Reckoner Bankbuster again? Well, last time our opponent played one, they got stuck on mana forever, so maybe this Bank Buster will do nothing as well. Oh, that's land three already. All right, well, we can Spider Food the Bank Buster. Oh, they're just going to insta-crew it for damage? Yikes. They are on the play. They do get to aggro the heck out of me again. So... Really far away from this Jin Gataxius, but everything else is castable real soon. If I Skull Bomb the prototype, then I don't get to block because I have to tap Ornithopter. And Spider Food, and I still have a block for the Iron Apprentice, but that's all. It's still probably better than playing Mere Sire, so we'll do it. Really hoping to top deck a land here. But I don't think it's worth sacking Skull Bomb to do it. Because being able to bounce one of their creatures with Skull Bomb is pretty big value. Shoot. Aw, oh, shoot. Ornithopter is only stopping one point of damage anyway, so let's tap that bad boy. Slow them down. And land. Alright, well. What can you do? Rid scale Tusker 2. All right, I'm over it. We're done. Three and three. It is. Some disappointing games there where our opponents were just on the play with great aggro decks, and that will crush your slower ramp decks, especially missing some land drops like we did there in that last one. I think the keep was reasonable with the Ornithopter. We had two pretty expensive cards in the hand with the Jignataxius and the Glutton, I think, of the opener, but then we just kept drawing a couple more, another four drop and five drop, and it's the exact opposite of what we needed to find there, so not a lot we could do in those last two games for sure. I think this deck was pretty solid. Um, we just ran into some pretty bad matchups. It's worst matchup for sure, being very aggressive decks, and... If an aggressive deck is on the play, that's where they can really pressure you and and uh, ruin your day for trying to play mana ramp cards in the early game that can't do a lot of blocking like Ornithopters and Weirding Woods. So my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Not really. I just like that quote. It's funny. Um, yeah, 3-3 three, is fine. Perfectly solid run for the deck. It just hit the rough matchups instead of the good ones in the end. And that will pull it down to 3-3 Mediocrity as an average deck to wrap up the format. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. 
If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.